Hey guys, it's Kelly. We're still on break, but we are bringing you some more bonus content today in the form of our Richard O'Brien Q&A. This was live streamed and there were some technical difficulties, so I apologize for the difficulties and also for the lapse in quality compared to what you're used to from us. If you prefer to watch the video stream, that's on Facebook or on our YouTube channel. And otherwise, we just really hope you'll enjoy. We got some interesting stuff in there. We will return with a normal minute on Friday, January 1st. So I vamped a little bit. I shared my Christmas wrap. I talked about the fact that we have some some fun questions from Richard O'Brien. Was there anything else that you wanted to chat about before we dug into all of the questions and answers that we have? No, I think we're good to go. All righty. So I have them up. Do you have all of your questions and answers up? Yes. Okay. So I guess we should start at the beginning. It's a very good place to start. And that first question that he answered was, what's the biggest difference in how you approach voice acting versus regular film acting? And how do you choose projects when it comes to voice acting? Do agents come to you and ask you to do it? I can't imagine that. Someone with your CV would have to audition for projects like Phine uh, Phineas and Ferb. And of course, Richard O'Brien's answer to that is, voice acting is a pleasure because you can read the lines which you have already poured over, finding pauses and stresses, and then fly away without fear of the crowd turning on you. So that next question, Kelly, do you want to take this one away? Yes. Well, hello. Hi, can you hear me? Well, she's left, so that's okay. I'll go ahead and take over the next one just because I know that there are a couple of you who are watching in Antissa. So the next question was What is your favorite book? And Richard O'Brien said, a favorite book is difficult to pin down. A large volume of all known great poets would be something to while away the long winter nights. And when I think of great poetry, of course, I, I think of dirty limericks because I am not a well-educated person. But if you want to go ahead and drop your favorite limerick in the chat, if I'm still vamping for time, I will, I will read that aloud. But... We're going to just keep on keeping on. Our next question, it is, have you ever seen an interpretation of the Rocky Horror Show that you found to be unique or a different but good take on your original work? Now, for those of you who, who are maybe just friends and fans of the movie, the Rocky Horror Show is, of course, the play version. It's a musical. It was what was around before the uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. And Richard O'Brien uh, was the person who is, of course, credited for, for writing that. So what he says is, I once saw a production in Essen performed in and by the Opera House, the uh, ensemble. That was Baroque and rock and roll gone mad. So I can't, uh, I can't imagine what that would have been like, but... If you were in that, then Richard O'Brien saw you and thought that you were absolutely insane, but in a good way. Looks like we have the beginnings of a limerick. We have, there once was a man from Kilgrass. Okay, well, we'll keep going then. Hopefully... By the time we get to the next one, Kelly will be right back up. So we have question number four. 
Do you think that Rocky Horror would have come into existence without the first production of Hair, where so many people seem to have been brought together for the first time? Now, a little bit of backstory for this one. For those of you that don't know, a lot of the people who are in the show and involved with the show originally were in one of two productions. The vast majority of them were in a production of Hair, and any uh, anybody who wasn't in that, it seems like they were in Jesus Christ Superstar. So, uh, like I said, the vast majority of those people come from the hair cast, and that's what we're really asking about with this. And Richard O'Brien says, nothing is formed in a vacuum, and so without previous references, very little that is considered new would ever see the light of day. You may have to sleep on this one for a while. It's already making my headache. So terribly sorry for that. It's one of those things that as I started researching everything, I, I really was interested to see what, uh, what his thoughts were. And it looks like Kelly is back. Kelly, can you hear me? And can I hear you? I can kind of hear you. Yeah. Okay. That's exciting. I'm yeah. happy to hear that. All of that's good. We're on question five, if you want to take it away. Question five? Yep. Uh, sure. So we asked if you could recommend one sci-fi or horror movie, old or new, what would it be? Richard said, the day the earth stood still wins on so many levels. The message still holds good. The acting is first class. And the lighting cameraman should have won an Oscar. So... Have you seen that? Yeah, I have seen parts of it. I have not watched the whole thing start to finish. It is great from what I've seen. The ending is amazing. Uh, I've talked about that a little bit on the show, actually, when it was um, talked about in Science Fiction Double Feature. So I do need to sit down and actually watch it. And I'm going to be honest with you, I have not seen it yet. Possibly because I watch the Rocky Horror Picture Show, you know, multiple times a day now. Yeah, I mean, that's the one with the with the really great ending where basically humanity screwed everything up for themselves, so. Oh, was To Serve Man a cookbook? <laughs> it, was, it, it isn't that one, but yeah. Okay. It's the same type of scenario. All right. Well, do you, I said the first four. Do you want to keep reading? Just because I'm sure that there are people who miss your beautiful voice. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, the So the next one is, do you have a dream role in theater you would absolutely love to play? And he said, I had a great wish to play Fagin and Lionel Bart's Oliver, and it became a wish fulfilled. I think he's a great... Um, Oh, Kelly, are y'all broken up about it? Hello. Hello. Oh. Yeah. Well, I'm not super sure if she can hear me, but I'm gonna go ahead and mute her until she gives Hello? me the thumbs up again. Hello, can you hear me? All right, that's okay. So hopefully you guys heard. He really wants to play Fagin. He was able to do that. And then. Yep. Can you hear me or no? I sure can. Can okay. you hear me? So, yeah, the, uh, I was just saying, I think he's a great choice for Fagin. Uh, then his next response was, I have a slight itch to play the magistrate in Wing Panera's play slash farce of the same name. Ooh. Yeah. Not sure that I've heard of uh, of that, but I'm kind of excited. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I probably should have looked it up before we did this, but I did not. Um, well, we will drop some information on our Instagram and our Facebook and our Twitter, which okay. is a nice segue. Um, if you see us scrolling on the bottom of your screen, if you like what you see, make sure you like us on Facebook and Instagram at Rocky Horror Minute and Twitter at Rocky Har Min. And for those of you who 
aren't a super big fan of listening to podcasts outside of a site that you would already look at, we are slowly uploading everything to YouTube. So just search us up at Rocky Harm Minute, and you should be able to start finding our episodes there. We also have some fun other content that we'll be posting from time to time. For sure. So the next question was a really good one. It's what is your favorite song on the Rocky Horror or Shock Treatment soundtracks? And I was honestly kind of shocked to hear his response, but he said, Same. Um, Superheroes gets an outing from time to time. Superheroes is one that a lot of Rocky fans don't even consider because of how it was not part of the movie for so long. At least in the American versions. Was it on the UK cut? It, it was. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think people will do sleep on that one from time to time, but it is, I, I think one of the, I think it's a lower energy, but higher emotional stake song. So I don't know. I kind of dig it. Oh, I love superheroes. Uh, I just don't think it's not, it's not the one I would have expected to be Richard O'Brien's favorite, but uh, that just goes to show how little I know, I guess I, um, I really do love it. One time we had a we had the audio not work for our movie, or not the whole movie wouldn't play, right? Right. At a shadow cast. Well, and both so, have happened, but yeah. Yeah, we went ahead and, with the show with no movie, which was crazy already. Um, and we had to play the sound. We played the soundtrack through people's phones, literally held up to a microphone to for the songs. But Superheroes wasn't on the soundtrack we had, so Leandra sang it, and it was beautiful. Yes, I I have the voice of a of a very emphasis um emphysema, eh, whatever a crackhead with emphysema. Ah, uh, yes, that's what now, I was going for. <laughs> that is not true. You have a beautiful voice, but it it was really uh, actually one of my favorite Rocky shows I ever did. We did lose a third of the audience, but the ones who stayed got something really special. Yeah, I was surprised that it was only a third that left. Yeah. Because that was, that was definitely an exciting time. Yeah, it really uh, really shows you how much of the movie you have memorized when you don't have the movie to go on for cues. I think my favorite part of that was, of course, all of the lines aren't in the soundtrack unless you're listening to the, the audience participation soundtrack, which we weren't using. We were, no, we were just using whatever we could find on our phones. And our very good near and dear friend, Akeem, was the criminologist. And he was really put to the test. And he knew the vast majority of the lines. But anytime he didn't, he would just kind of pause and go, I think you know what, you're, uh, what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and the audience loved it. And to this day, I'm just... Mm. It was really good. <laughs> So the next question was, when it came to a project like Shock Treatment, how long did you have to write new music? For example, did you get the movie green-lighted before all the songs were complete, or did you get the go-ahead and then you had to write all the songs? I imagine you probably had some already written, but do you have to have all the songs done before you get the go-ahead? And Richard O'Brien, this was his most relatable answer for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I write songs when pushed into a corner. Deadlines, script development, character development, guilt. The last one is odd, but kicks in when I'm feeling useless. I relate to this so much. I can't do anything except under pressure. Yeah, those of no, those of you who know me outside of the podcast and maybe have done theater with me know that I kind of have a, a go-to line when I'm talking about line memorization. And it's the three things I need in order to memorize my lines are fear, guilt, and shame. And I need all three of those things, or I'm just not going to be able to have my lines memorized. I have gotten better at that, but still a work in progress. So I can go ahead and jump in on the next one. Sure. A few years ago, you played a live show at Retrofest, I believe it was called, where you played It's Only Make Believe by Conway Twitty. You seem to have a wide interest in music. Is there any genre of music that you like that fans would be surprised to know? And Richard O'Brien said, I'm very fond of jazz. The cooler, the better. Chet Baker, Billie Holiday, 
Uh, Stefan Grappoli. Yeah, I love that answer. I also love jazz. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I'm a classically trained musician. And because of that, I really only listen to kind of the classical string arrangement sorts of uh, pieces for quite some time. And then when I got introduced to jazz, the fact that it didn't really follow as many rules really messed with me. So it's a little bit hard for me to enjoy jazz nearly as much as I would like to, because it makes me, makes me feel like I, I'm missing out. And I really am. Well, at least you didn't say it's hard for you to enjoy jazz because you have perfect pitch. <laughs> uh, so the next one was, how much input did you have in casting the Rocky Horror Picture Show as well as shock treatment? I know you had worked with some of the Transylvanians prior to the movie, so I imagine that it would have gone into the decision. I would think it also went into shock treatment because I know some of them obviously were in Rocky Horror. It's funny, until the Rocky Horror from Concept to Cult came out, many of us had no idea some Transylvanians were cast into it as well. But Leandra and I knew. Uh, so how we knew the obvious ones, but didn't know people like Raynor, Annabelle, Gay, and more were in it as well. So he said, I wasn't too concerned with the casting of the movies, as I felt then and remain convinced that it is the director's choice that matters most. Amen, Richard O'Brien. Yeah, just trust your directors. Oh, and hello to you, Amanda. Hi, can you hear me? Well, looks like Kelly's doing that sporadic in and out sort of thing that she's best known for. So I'm I'll go here. ahead and... <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> you know I can't help but mess with you. But I'll go ahead and take the next one, and hopefully that gives your your system a little bit more time to, to play nice. The next yeah, question. I'm here. I can hear you. I don't know if you can oh. hear me. You're definitely coming in, uh, coming in and out and you're definitely on a delay. But that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next question. And this was, uh, what is Rufus like? And for those of you who don't know, Rufus uh, was one of the Transylvanians. He is uh, kind of known as the one of the very few people of color in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And it looks like Richard Bryan said, Rufus was lovely. He choreographed the original production of Superstar. So as I said before, I know that a lot of people came from that original hair cast, but some people came from Jesus Christ Superstar and Rufus was certainly one of them. I think in one of the episodes I might have abs accidentally said a whoops and said that Rufus was uh, the choreographer for the movie. That is not true, but he did go on to choreograph lots of things after Rocky Horror. And Kelly, if you're back, if you want to take this last one, because it's definitely the zestiest. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. So yeah, the last one is a little spicy. So, you know, not your mama's Rocky Horror q and It is, uh, I asked him what he, we, so we asked him what he thought of the new movie remake, which is, that's let, Rocky Horror, let's do the time warp again, the Fox remake. And he said, the remake, in quotes, of Rocky Horror Picture Show was misguided and least said, soonest mended. So, I guess he didn't like it. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, as I've said on the show, I did not make it through the first song. So, it might be great. I have no idea. Don't come for me. But <laughs> Richard O'Brien isn't a fan. Well, I don't know that he said that he wasn't a fan, but he did say it was misguided. And okay, yeah, I guess you I guess you could take if you were trying really hard, you could take from that line that he is not necessarily not a fan, but and I mean, he said least said soon as mended. So So, let's say no more about it. I know that that's what I say about lots of things, you know, generally about you. 
Oh, yeah. Leandra, what did you think of the remake? Well, I'm just going to have to quote somebody else and say Lee oh. said suits mended. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought it was it was fine. I I don't think that it was supposed to be a remake. Yeah. But I will say that it kind of missed a couple of marks and the fact that the time warp became too complicated for any person to reasonably be able to do, I think, was a big miss. Oh, did they change the time warp? Um, yes, obviously you can't change the jump to the left and the step to the right and stuff like that. But the Transylvanians were, were doing way too much choreography. So you couldn't go like, okay, as a shadow caster, let's do okay, this. I will say that in the original movie, it was pretty fucking complicated. Okay, well then this well, would I'm, blow I'm your saying, mind. You think, I, I don't know. I struggle with Transylvanian choreography and the time warp, but as we all know, I'm not a dancer. You are the talent, though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But one thing I did kind of like about Let's Do the Time Warp Again was one of the Transylvanians was wearing a black suit with kind of white polka dots, if I recall correctly. And it was very evocative of a of a suit kind of combo that Patricia Quinn was wearing fairly frequently at that time. I wanna say that she wore it for a magazine cover rather recently, at least at that point. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. They're, they're like doing a nod, but I might've been reading too much into it. I don't know. Yeah. I also thought that the background um, and the set that they had was at least fun. Whether or not it was good, not sure, but fun it was. Yeah, I, I will watch it one of these days. I'm sure we'll end up covering it as a bonus episode. Yeah, I, I'm not saying that it's my favorite thing, and I'm not saying that I've watched it again, but... I will say that it has occurred, and there, there's some stuff to like about it. it that's few and far between, though. Yeah. So I've reached the end of the questions that we got. So we can do one of two things. We can either kind of wrap up or... I can pass the baton over to you and you can vamp for a couple minutes while I just kind of go like this. Well, I don't know about vamping, but I was going to offer that if anybody had any uh, questions for us, we could take them since we're live. Oh, that's fair. Um, I, I mean, yeah, the, I'm sorry guys about how, uh, how my, technology has been handling this today we're still kind of new to streaming and my i don't know if it was my internet or if it was Streamyard. something was really giving me trouble but i seem to be all right right now yeah you look good you sound good you look good yeah i am naked so i mean it certainly would appear that way. Please stop. We're going to get kicked off of this. I am not naked. I'm wearing clothes. It's just uh, it's just how I'm built. I'm not bad. I'm just drawn that way. We're going to get zucked. <laughs> yeah. But so, yeah, if anybody has questions, they can drop them in the chat. Otherwise, I guess that's a successful-ish live stream. Yeah. Um, I know that a question that some people might have is, why why do you have these matching corsets? Was this just for that? Uh, thank you, Adrian. <laughs> what did Adrian say? I can't see the chat oh. where you're seeing that, by the way. Adrian said, Zuck has entered the chat. No! <laughs> Get out. And then Dawn, darling Dawn, said, will you be posting this show on YouTube when where Cosmo will see it? The answer is yes. yes. And that is absolutely we'll a thing. A little bit to take out some of the awkward uh, technical difficulties moments, but yes. And just so that we can <laughs> no, comment, I saw areoli. No. I don't know what an areoli is. 
it must be some sort of it's a pasta, pasta, though. It's a type of filled pasta. But no, well, um, you are a filled I'm pasta. On, I'm on Areola Patrola, and there is none. See? <laughs> Um, just, just as a side note, yesterday we did a photo shoot wearing these costumes and it was, and I, I'm almost a little embarrassed to say it was at my grandmother's house <laughs> and we're just wandering around in corsets. And at some point my, my grandmother said, so what is this for? And I was really hopeful that my dad had conveyed that this was because we were trying to get some promo shots, hopefully get them sent over to this magazine that's doing a, a little bit of a, a shout out for us, you know, that sort of thing. But she didn't quite get that, but it's okay. Kelly, who was wearing what she is wearing now, um, told my grandmother that it was for a Christmas special. Which it is. The promo shots were primarily for the Christmas special. So. so that is pretty exciting. Kat says, are we ever going to do Rocky again? Yes. I'm going to kind of channel Scarlett O'Hara and say, as God is my witness, <laughs> I will do Rocky again. <laughs> yes. I don't know how. I don't know when. But I do know why. It's because I can't not. Yeah, in a post-apocalyptic hellscape, like if the entire world is burned out and DC is just like that Fallout game that was set in DC, I don't know which one. It's called Maybe. Fallout. No, there's a whole series. Oh, okay. Fallout my, 3. Uh, my boyfriend is chanting from far away, Fallout 3, Fallout 3. So there you go. If DC looks like Fallout 3, uh, then I will still be doing Rocky in the burned out E Street Cinema. And Dawn says, was your grandma wearing a corset too? <laughs> well, thank you for that. The answer is no. But her dad might have been, who was also there. I, I would be shocked if that was a thing. He was trying very hard to be like, do you guys need anything? I, I'm, just, I'm just asking. I, I'm very, okay, yeah. are you good? You good? That's great. <laughs> yeah, I felt a little bad. Not uh, not bad enough to to not listen to uh, to what other people were saying. Like, yeah, you know, like you're chugging cock. <laughs> that was a thing that was yelled at my grandmother's yeah. house. Dan said stripper pole loudly many times. So, Oscar says grandma's Christmas hotties and gingerbread photo hour. Oh my god, man! Is it too late to rename the show? Um. You know what? We will we'll go ahead and do that for next year okay. when Oscar is our gingerbread man. That'll be season two. It, yeah. Yeah. Adrian says, this ain't your grandmother's Rocky Horror fo Minute photo shoot. It's Thank true. goodness. It literally was her grandmother's Rocky Horror Minute photo shoot. That was the problem. I will say that this wasn't just like a random thing where we were like, yeah, let's just find somebody's house and be weird in it. She has a gorgeous setup. She uh, she collects Santa figurines and she has just this incredibly nice vintage look of the Christmas tree and it's always decked out. And there were gigantic presents under the, uh, under the tree. So this wasn't just a random like weird fetishy thing. At least it wasn't for me. Yes. Uh, no, I. it actually does help a lot for me if I'm defiling an innocent place. So, yeah. I hate that. No, that's fine. Amanda says, I miss doing Rocky so much. We miss doing Rocky so much. And we miss doing Rocky so much with you, Amanda. So yeah. next time you're in D.C. and next time we're able to do Rocky, you should come by and say, hello, bonjour, bon jovi. Yes. Kat says... Woohoo! I assume that was in response to defiling an innocent place. That seems likely. Yeah. Yeah, I I will say one benefit of doing uh, doing this photo shoot at my grandmother's is we got to hang out with the sweetest dog ever. She has a dog named Woody, and he is a semi sentient teddy bear. And he just wandered around being very happy there were people. 
Yeah, he was very cute. <laughs> Oscar um, says, how does it feel knowing you're only at 30 minutes into the movie, like slightly under 30%? So much more ahead. Uh, feels good. I don't want this to end. I wish it could go on forever. Honestly, same. I'm having yeah. a great time. And it really has been overwhelming uh, what the what the reaction has been. And I hope that even when we move on to shock treatment, we, we keep some of your, some of your eyes and some of your ears kind of listening to us. And honestly, and, I have to say that like, it feels like, it feels like we just started and it's crazy that we're a third of the way through already to me. That's how we've feels. only just begun. Yeah. But I mean, that's, a lot more than it feels like we've done, you know? Agreed. Yeah. And of course, we will have the occasional special or two. Kelly, do you want to talk a little bit about what to expect with our Christmas special? Yeah, so for those of you who haven't heard this news, we actually have Barry Bostwick pl having playing a small role as Santa doing kind of a cameo in our Christmas special. Uh, so that's really exciting. It's going to be like a kind of like a takeoff on those old Christmas variety hours that they did in the 70s. So it'll have two really hammy MCs, which are me and Leandra, hosting. And then we'll just have we'll have some sketches, some songs. It'll be Christmassy and fun and silly. And again, Barry Bostwick joined as a cameo, which we're like incredibly humbled and grateful for. And I think that it's going to be fun for everybody. Please give that episode a listen. You won't regret it. We're working really hard on it. Yeah, that that will be posted sometime around Christmas. Hopefully, we don't get, get hopefully we don't get delayed at all. But even if we do, it's worth the wait. So mm -hmm. Oscar has a question: Do you want to do shock treatment, or are you absolutely going to finish Rocky Heart before moving forward? No, these don't seem mutually exclusive. My answer, my answer to both is yes. Um, yeah, Rocky first. Rocky then first, we will go to shock to, treatment. I have forced her to commit to shock treatment. I'm actually really excited about that one. I want to introduce more people to that movie, and I, I feel like I want to bring more people on board with enjoying it because I think a lot of people watch shock treatment once and they're like, "Man, what the fuck is this? Where's Tim Curry?" And they never try it again, but I actually think there's a lot to love about that movie. And there definitely is. I know that my very good near and dear friend Dawn was the first person to go, okay, so Leandro, we like shock treatment. And I said, oh, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure that that's true statement. She's like, okay, well, we're going to watch it because we like it. And, and then I sat down and watched it with a cast at a convention. And I went, oh. Oh, you're right. And she's like, well, obviously I'm right. Dawn, thank you so much for doing that, if you're still watching. Because uh, I watched Shock Treatment for the first time with Leandra, and her her joining and doing all the callbacks and everything really added to the experience for me. Yeah, it, it really was something that the first time I saw it, I watched it alone with Dan and we had no idea what to expect and we we're like what the uh I don't know it was like when I tried to watch farce of the penguins and no I didn't say march of the penguins I said farce of the penguins and I could not get through it we were just like turn that off it's upsetting Oscar says do you see yourself doing shock treatment concurrently with Rocky Horror sorry typed too fast no, never. I don't. That would be terrible. However, uh, we have talked about. We're probably going to get this going after the holidays, but we have talked about starting a Patreon and doing potentially the Rocky Horror Porno. Which one? Which one is the one that you like, Leandra? The more recent one, the one I, you frequently get off to. <laughs> is that the is that the Rocky Horror Porno show or the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Um, neither. Thanks. Okay. Um, <laughs> just answer the hmm. question, perhaps. So I will say that there is one of them that has Ron Jeremy in it, and 
the uh, the cast used costuming from a local Rocky Horror Shadow cast, and I believe that that one is the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I might be mistaken. That was one that many years ago I saw with the current current iteration of my Rocky cast, and we spent the entire time just going like, "These costumes are great." What what's going yeah. on with this? This is fantastic. But yeah, that's that's really my experience with that. Oscar loved well, it. That, yeah, I mean I so that I would love to cover for the Patreon and I think that is something we would do concurrently, but we're we're waiting till we have the Christmas show at the door before we worry about that, I think. I think that that's pretty fair. Yeah. But if you're if you are looking to give us money, there are plenty of ways to do that. Um, I know yeah. through Anchor, you can uh, you can drop us some cash. It's essentially like Patreon, but it's through them. And there's always a link with uh, with that information with all of our all of our streams, even if it's on like Spotify or or Apple Podcasts. It's just at the bottom. So you know, yeah. or you can just ask Kelly to that. Uh, to give some deets on how to give us money, I'm sure that she'll give us uh, give you a Venmo. Yeah, for sure. And I that one I really like because I don't have to give Leandra a cut. What? So. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, so, but yeah, the that's the shock treatment show will be season two, kind of of Rocky Horror Minute. We're still figuring out how we're going to handle the feeds and everything, but. We will wait until the mo- first movie is wrapped up for sure. Yeah, for sure. And just kind of wrapping this one up, I have a question for you, Kelly. Of the Richard O'Brien questions that we uh, that we got back answers to, which one was kind of the most surprising for you? Well, I mentioned I was pretty surprised about the sh- superheroes thing. That that's not the answer I would have expected. But now, what would you have expected? Um, I guess like if somebody had like put a gun to my head and asked me to pick his favorite song, maybe like science fiction double feature because that has so much of himself and the things he loves in it, or like <sighs> going over the soundtrack in my head. I mean, musically, a lot of the songs in Shock Treatment, I think, are a little better. And clearly that was a labor of love for him as well. So I maybe would have thought one of those. But I don't think Superheroes is a bad choice. I think it's great. I just was surprised that was his pick. And I'm very surprised that he answered the thing about the remake at all. That is true. I I thought that would be one of the ones he passed up, but I guess not. Well, Dawn says Phantom of the Paradise Minute. We have and talked about that. that like, it is on our list. Yeah. Um, the the next one that I'm kind of most excited about, just to answer Oscar's question of what non Rocky, non shocky movie would you want to do if you could? I I would say Labyrinth is very much on my like I desperately want to do this sort of list because um, David Bowie is mm, it, like there's just so much good going on with that, but I know that that's a bit of a tough sell for Kelly. It is. I'm willing to watch it again. I was not impressed when I watched it at age 14, but I'm a different person now. It has been a couple years since I was 14, so. Uh, but Phantom of the Paradise actually has me very interested. Uh, I haven't seen that one either, but from what I know of it, I'm really interested in checking that out. So Phantom of the Paradise was also a film that Dawn had introduced to me. And I saw that for the first time when I was up visiting with her. And I I was shocked at how good it was. And I was shocked at how little I had heard about it. So that is one that I'm certainly interested in. Yeah. Because ideally our show could focus on like cult classics. I mean, my real dream would be to focus on 
cult movies that were frequently shadow casted or like it were at part of like the midnight screening thing. But I feel like the room's been done. Shout out to the room minute. Hedwig's been done. Shout out to the Hedwig minute by minute uh, show, which is great. But so like a lot of the ones, at least that I think of as being shadow casted or kind of already been done by other people <laughs> so yeah i'm fairly sure that clue minute has been done oh yeah clue minute's been done and i would be shocked if the princess bride minute wasn't a thing oh the princess bride minute uh apparently had multiple people start a podcast at the same time oh that was awkward yeah because that's something that um something that people told me when i when i first started up because it was right around the time another Rocky podcast started. A lot of people said, oh, the same thing happened with Clerks and with The Princess Bride. So, um, but anyway, so yeah, Princess Bride Minute has been done multiple times, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that was shadow casted. I know that down in Virginia Tech, that was something that was shadow casted. My guess is that other places have done that as well. Um, Robert is the person who runs the Virginia Tech cast and he did a lot of non-Rocky shadow casting as well. And it always seemed very fun. Yeah, I would love, I've only ever been on a Rocky shadow cast, but I would love to shadow cast some other movies. Do you ever find yourself when you're like watching a movie that, like just any movie, like thinking about how you would shadow cast it? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. for me where there's choreography. Well, it is a little bit before six. And if we had started on time, that would have meant that we are, uh, we've been on for about an hour. So we're going to pretend that that was the case. Yeah. And joining us for a full hour. Yeah. Thank you very much. I had a lot of fun. Kelly, I hope you had a lot of fun. Yeah. And of course, all of you watching, I hope you had a fantastic, wonderful, delightful amount of fun. And if you didn't, I'm terribly sorry. You can leave us a five-star review with your complaints. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, thank you very much. We will, of course, post this on our YouTube and our podcast feed at some point so that the Richard O'Brien answers are very accessible. But uh, we had a really good time compiling some questions for him, and I was really happy to get his answers. So thank you to everyone who contributed. I'm sorry if he didn't pick your questions. Uh, he chose the ones that spoke to him, I guess. And thank you very much again to uh, to Dawn and of course to Cosmo. Cosmo was our, our inside man on getting these questions over to Richard O'Brien. So uh, I really can't thank them enough. No, yeah. But much love and I hope that you're having a fantastic winter time. And for those of you that celebrate, um, happy Hanukkah. We are in the fourth night as of like now. So happy Hanukkah, happy early Christmas. And I guess let's end this the same way we end all of our episodes with us speaking at the same time. We go, now no. you, you don't, don't have to go, go home, but you can't stay here. So get the fuck out. Yeah.